uh, to the book of Psalms, chapter 113. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Kind of an honor, as always, to be up here. We've got so much stuff going on. It seems sometimes that it's less and less often. Hallelujah. But I love it every time. It's an honor to be before you here today. I do not count it lightly. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 113. I'll let you see that it's only nine verses before I scare you and say we're going to read the whole chapter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says in verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising unto, of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God? Who dwelleth on high? Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and he lifteth up the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. I wonder if one more time you can give a shout of praise and praise. I'm going to be talking today for a few moments, if you could put up my slide, on Halal Yah. Some of you may remember I preached a message that uh, is on the same idea of this about two years ago I looked it up. Uh, but I am also very happy to say, I'd say maybe even half of the crowd that we have here today were not with us two years ago. So I'm thankful for all of you that are here and I know that the Lord has been dealing with me again on this message and I pray that it be a blessing to all that are here. Hallelujah. That chapter that we read of Psalm chapter 113, uh, it is the beginning of a prayer and a song that the Israelites would sing. For, uh, chapter 113 through 118, they would sing uh, uh, around the Passover time and the Feast of the Tabernacles and dedication and even Pentecost. They would sing this song of praise. At Passover, they would start with this chapter of 113. This was their, uh, their prayer before the meal, you could say. They would sing this song and pray it and, and sing it unto the Lord before they would part, begin to partake of the Passover lamb. It was uh, even in the temple, they would sing this song while the Passover sacrifice was being done. These chapters are known as the Egyptian Hallel. And which basically it is a song of praise to the Lord for all that he has done. Psalm 114 is all about praising the Lord for bringing them out of the bondage of Egypt. Hallelujah. It is a song of praise for all that God has done. And Psalm 113 here covers just so much. Hallelujah. Who is like unto our God who dwelleth on high. Think about he this. He has to humble himself to behold the things that are in the earth and in the heaven. Just to behold the heavens, he has to humble himself. That's how great and how mighty our God is. And you can see throughout here reminiscing uh, possibly about promises that had gone by, making the barren woman to rejoice and to be joyful. I'm reminded, uh, as Brother Mayo taught in our youth class on Wednesday night, about Abraham and Sarah who were barren and had no child, but yet they had a promise. 
And when that promise came about, it caused them to be joyful, naming Isaac laughter. They're, we can see that they are reminiscing about the things that God has done, but very clearly also praising the Lord for the things that they can't see. They can't see that he has to humble himself to the heaven and the earth, but they know that he is greater than the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. They can't see all the things that he is doing and all the things that he's going to do, but yet they praise the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. They give him the praise, hallelujah. Yeah. It is known that even in Matthew 26, when Jesus and them were in that upper room for Passover, that they would have sang this very psalm of 113 through 118. This was very important to them. And Psalm 113 begins and ends with praise ye the Lord. Yeah. They started with praise ye the Lord. And they end it with praise ye the Lord. Amen. I remember when I was a child, I was staying at my grandma's house and she taught me to pray before my food, but she taught me God is good, God is great, bless his food, amen. <laughs> this wasn't that kind of prayer, hallelujah. This was an adoration to their God. Yes. This was a Lord, thank you. Where would we be if you had not saved us? Where would we be if you had not come through for us? Where would we be if this Passover lamb that we are about to partake in hadn't saved us from the bondage of his Egypt? Where would we be, Lord, if you had not come at our rescue so many times? Praise ye the Lord. They begun with praise ye the Lord. And they ended it with praise ye the Lord. And that is how we should live our life. Hallelujah. We should begin our day with praise ye the Lord. And we should lay down at night to go to sleep with praise ye the Lord in our hearts. Lord, you have been so good to me. You have brought me through so much. When I was bound, you set me free. When I had chains of sin that I cried and cried and never could be set free from, you broke them and destroyed them off of me. Praise you, the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We've got plenty to praise Him for. Plenty to thank Him for. Most of the examples in here probably resonate with some people in this room where once we were living in dust, living in the dunghill. I know that's a nasty thought, but that's where we were when we were in sin. We were in a dunghill. We were in the stinkiest and worst of places. But our Lord brought us out of there with our stink, with our dirt, with our ugliness. He brought us out of that place and he raises us up to be princes. Not of our own power or our own accord, but by the power of Jesus, by the power of our Lord. He sets us above the sin and the things that once kept us bound. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise. And that's my main point here today, is our praise. Yes. This word here, praise ye the Lord. Uh, like I said, I talked about this. Some of this you may remember. Some of you may not, and that's fine. Hallelujah, I pray you get with it. But that word praise, we have the word praise. We understand what praise is. Yes. But in the Bible, in your King James Version, that word praise in Hebrew is halal. And it's a lot more than just a praise. It's a lot more than just a clapping of hands. It's a lot more than just a, a, a praise to God. But the, in the definition, when you look up the word halal, there's a few things there. It talks about shining, to shine, to boast about, to praise. There's even some that go point to, to be foolish, to be a little mad or a little crazy. Yes, yes. The halal was more than just our Wednesday night clapping and singing the words that are on the screen. Hallelujah. Amen. Halal is a lot more than just going through the motions at church because we've got to be here or else somebody's going to think bad of us. Or we've got to be here because our parents are making us. That's not halal. But in the Hebrew, that word halal, it was the deepest praise that I can give, I give to you. 
the deepest praise that I have all of my life, all of my life, all of my praise, even to the point of seeming foolish and a little bit crazy, I give it to you. That's what halal was about. And I, 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 I'm afraid to tell you all here today, no matter if you're a man or woman, young or old in this place, we all will halal something. We all give our devotion to something. We all spend our time on something. Spend our money on something. A few weeks ago, there was a little game called the Super Bowl going on. And there are thousands of people, I don't know, maybe millions, I don't know, that give their halal to those men running around in tights throwing around a pigskin on a field. We all halal something. We all give our time and our adoration to something. And the Israelite people made it very clear that when they gave halal, they didn't want to just give it to anybody or anything. They didn't want it to go to their leaders. They didn't want it to go to even their parents or their children. Their halal went to God. Their halal was lifted up to the Lord. Lord, you have been so good to me. All that you have done for me. I give you my all, Lord. Let my life shine about how good you are. Let my boasting not be of my accomplishments or my achievements. But let me boast of the name of the Lord. Let me boast of the goodness of the Lord. Even if people come and think I'm a little bit crazy. Lord, I give you my praise. Hallelujah. That phrase, praise ye the Lord, it said many times in scripture, many, many times, even in the book of Psalms. Sometimes it's praise ye the Lord, sometimes it's praise the Lord, sometimes it's praise the name of the Lord. But it's always halal is praise and yah. That's halal yah, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yah being the shortened form of Jehovah, Yehovah, Yahweh. When they gave their halal, they gave it to Jehovah. Amen. They gave it to their God. Amen. They gave it to the one that they knew brought them out of Egypt. The one that they knew would bring them through whatever battles they were currently in as they continued to give the Passover sacrifice and celebrate the things that God had done, reminding themselves that if God could do it then, he can do it again. Hallelujah. Their halal went to their God, Jehovah. Now I'm trying to be quick here. Here in this place, Maybe all of us, maybe not all of us. If you if you don't in, include it in this, I, I, I pray right now that the Lord bring revelation. Amen. But we don't worship just Jehovah. Oh we don't worship just an Old Testament God and a New Testament Son. But what we worship is the Lord God, Jehovah, wrapped in the flesh of the one that came down and died for you and I so that when we were lost and when we were bound in our sin of Egypt, he came down with his blood and washed it over us and set us free from the bondage of Egypt that we were in. We understand that Jehovah, the Father, the creator of the world, the water splitter, hallelujah, the lion's mouth shudder, he's not just the God of the Old Testament. But he came in a better form so that we could look upon him in the man, Jesus Christ. This may become a knowledge to some of you, but Isaiah chapter 12 says in that day, speaking prophetically, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Amen. Behold, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord, all capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah, our Lord, and then they say again, Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Now, that word salvation carries a lot of weight to it. In the Hebrew, that word
word salvation is also Yahashua or Yeshua. It was the name of Joshua in the Old Testament translated. When they brought it over into the Greek, that Yahashua or Yeshua was translated into Isus. And that Greek of the New Testament that we have translated into English is Jesus. So what it's actually saying here is that God is my Jesus. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my soul. He also is become my Jesus. back in the back room here today the importance to Jesus just how important this is this understanding he says in John chapter 8 verse 23 and 24 he said unto them you are from beneath I am from above you are of this world I am not of this world I say it therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins if you don't believe that I am he you shall die in your sins that's pretty serious that's not just a, 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 that's not just your ideas. That's not just an interpretation. That's not just your preference. Jesus says, if you don't believe that I am speaking that word of self-existent, that he spoke, that when he said later on in the same chapter, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. When Moses said, who's sending me to Egypt to set them free? He said, I am that I am is sending you. That same word, self-existent. He was not created. He was not brought about by any other means. He created himself. He's the self-existent one. He was before there was a one. He is and he will be before there ever will be. Given a, 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 a moment of time that had occurred 
When Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you said in your heart that you will ascend into heaven. You said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's Lucifer speaking. This is the Lucifer, the angel. The before he was cast down. Before he became our adversary. He was an angel. Many believe, and I, I believe this is a main reason, many believe he was the, the worship leader, if you may, in heaven, that he was responsible. That name, Lucifer, means light bearer. Yes. That he bear, he would bear the light of praise to the Lord. And Lucifer in Hebrew is Halal. The root of Halal is Halal. That the root of the name Lucifer Right out of the deepest praise, halal, came Halal. But what happened was, the light bearer started to think that he was the one producing the light. And he tried to turn the light around and shine it on himself. And turn the praise onto himself. But without the halal, you can't have the Halal. Without the Lord, you can't have the light to shine. He was the light bearer. Halal means to shine. You can't shine the light unless you have the light of the Lord coming through you. Hallelujah. So here we have Halal. And when he decided to turn his praise to something else, to himself, the light stopped shining. Oh. And he was cast out of heaven. Him and his minions that would follow. And Jesus, and all throughout the Bible, we're known of this Lucifer now becoming Satan. And Satan, meaning the adversary, or the accuser of the brethren. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be anything like the devil. I don't want to be anything like that cheap shot devil that we let there is. I don't want to be anything like him. But what we can see from his example is that when we turn our praise away from God and put it on to something else, ourselves, others, our achievements, our belongings, we stop being the light bearer and we start being the adversary and the accuser. You want to know a church that's having trouble after trouble? There's something wrong with the praise in that church. I believe it. I see it all over the Bible. That when we've got an adoration to God and we spend our time looking up to Him, we're not going to spend our time looking around at everybody else and what everybody else is doing wrong. When we give our glory to God, there is nothing that will stop the light from shining. When you start saying, I can't go to church because of this and that, My God. something's wrong with your praise. My God. You've forgotten why you're praising. Yeah. Oh. You've forgotten who you're praising. My God. When you think you can't go pray for somebody or do something because of what they said or did to you, maybe yesterday, maybe 10 years ago, but there's something wrong with our praise if instead of giving him glory, we start acting, oh. accusing others around us. That's like the devil. Jesus. I don't want to be like that. I want to give yes. God my glory. Jesus. I want to give God my honor. In this culture that we live in, uh, it, it's very normal now, and the, the Bible does talk about clapping. It does say to clap. In fact, Psalm 47 and 1, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Amen. There are commands to clap our hands, yes. but there are more, many, many more commands. To shout unto the Lord. Amen. In fact that very same scripture. Clap your hands all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We're given many more commands. To shout for the victory. To shout with the voice of triumph. To shout with the voice of joy. It was the shout of the people that brought down the walls of Jericho as the Israelites walked around. It was the shout. We live in a clapping society. We clap 
for politicians, we clap for entertainers, we clap for sports and uh, musicians. We live in that kind of society here. And all overseas, you never hear clapping, rarely ever. In Israel, they call it the wailing wall because they're just wailing and yelling at it. That's the culture that we live in. And again, the Bible talks about clapping. I don't want you to stop clapping. But let me tell you, your shout is much more important than your clap. And what you're shouting is much more important than your clap. Hallelujah. There was two times that they would shout in the the Bible for the most part. They would shout when they're headed toward the enemy. And they would shout for rejoicing, for victory. I tell you, when we shout, we're doing both. When we shout hallelujah, we are attacking the enemy. And he is reminded every time we say that word halal and halal y'all that we're not worshiping him like we used to. Now we're worshiping him. Where he used to get our halal, he used to get our praise, now he does. Every time we shout halal, I believe we're giving the devil a slap in the face that reminding him I'm not yours anymore. The Lord has set me free. And when we shout, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Does it mean you are in triumph? It means shout unto the Lord like you've already got the triumph. Shout unto God like you've already got the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My last part here, my last point. This phrase, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's not actually a praise word, as I said earlier. It's not necessarily a praise to God when we shout hallelujah. But the phrase, praise ye the Lord, is actually a command. And it's not a praise necessarily, it is a command to praise. When David would write in his psalms and the, 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 the writers of psalms, when they would write, praise ye the Lord, they weren't just saying, I praise the Lord, but they were saying to all that hear this, praise ye the Lord. And now I believe the same way, it carries the same weight for us here today. When we shout hallelujah, we are sending a command. To everything that we are in charge of, which let me tell you is from our head to our toes. My God. We are sending ourselves a command to praise the Lord. Yes. A command to praise Jesus. A command. See, the problem is, up here, a lot of us, we, I, I know God can do it. I know he can. The problem is we believe it in our heads sometimes, but our feet disagree. Our hands disagree. Our hearts disagree. And we can hear that. Listen to the way you talk. If you say, I, I believe God can do it, but you don't really truly believe that God is going to do it. Yes, there may be extenuating circumstances, but with God, all things are possible. Every single thing is possible with the Lord God. So what hallelujah really does is it says, I'm not just going to think God can do it. I declare and I command myself to praise the Lord for what he has already done and what he is about to do. I'm not going to just think it in my head and mumble it out my lips. I command you, body, praise the Lord. I command you, feet, dance before the Lord. Run to the Lord. I command you, hands. Clap to the Lord. Some of you need to stop thinking God can do it and start commanding yourself to praise God with a voice of triumph like He's already done it. Hallelujah. A couple Monday nights ago, we were here praying. And let me tell you, if you are able to be here and you're not being here, you are missing out. We have had some powerful prayer meetings in here, especially the last couple months. God has been doing so great and mighty things. And we were here a couple Monday nights ago. And I was kneeling down praying. And the Lord began to move mightily. And I felt an urge in my spirit just to shout hallelujah. 
And I began to God been stirring this message in me and the, the importance of our praise. And that began to stir in me. And I started shouting hallelujah. And I tell you, as I knelt, my body started shaking all over from my head to my toes. I was shaking. I was jittery. I was, I was quaking. Hallelujah. All of my body just began to respond to the hallelujah, the command to praise the Lord. And my body began to respond. And I felt the power of God come over so mightily. Hallelujah. We went to district conference this weekend. I, I was uh, blessed with the opportunity to go. And let me tell you, there were some people there making a fool of themselves. There were some people there that just looked downright crazy if you didn't know what was going on. But when you could feel the power of God moving, and you began to see the dance and the running and the shouting and the clapping going on, you know that they're not leaving this place the same. Whatever they came here with, they're dancing it right out right now, and God's doing something great for them. There is power when we praise, when we worship, when we glorify our God. There is power. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and stand. I know this is a little bit different, and I honestly, I'm just going to let the Lord close it out. I don't even know what to do.